So far in class, we've been talking about how energy affects the physical system, um, the phase of our our solution or substance, and also um, the temperature or the movement of the particles inside uh, that substance. It's important for us to be able to map what is going on with the energy, where is it going, what is it doing. So we have devised a way just to show and explain easily where this movement and what is happening with the energy. And we do that by using energy bar charts. So this is just a method for us to track what is happening with the energy. So we're going to start out with an example and we're just going to talk about coffee. A cup of coffee cools as it sits at room temperature. Um, sits on a table so it's going to go down to room temperature. We use what's called um, or what we refer to as an LOL chart. So see L O L. Haha, <laughs> pretty cute, right? So these LOL charts, we are looking at the thermal energy, phase energy, and chemical energy of our system. Uh, but our first step is to determine what the system is. In this case, we are talking about a cup of coffee. So we make a cup of coffee the system. Now, obviously that, that heat from the cup of coffee, if you're holding it, the heat is going into your hands. That is part of the, uh, a part of the environment, the surroundings. So your hand would be the surroundings. What we care about is what is happening directly with that cup of coffee. Is energy going in or is energy coming out? So our system, we say, is this cup of coffee. In this case, uh, you start with a cup of coffee and you end with a cup of coffee. So our chemical energy is ignored. For the most part, for these um, first bar charts and LOL graphs that we're going to do, the chemical energy is going to stay the same. Pretty much our substances we're going to be working with, we're going to focus on the phase energy and the thermal energy. So assigning a value for EPH, or the phase energy, due to the interactions between particles, the energy is stored and how they are arranged. So with solids, we have them kind of locked into that pattern. Liquids, they get to move around, but they're still kind of compressed together um, beneath that liquid line. And then gases are able to go all over the place. Because of this energy, the particles and, and the amount of movement those particles are doing, we can assign different values for our bar charts. These are strictly for use in our bar charts. They have association with the amount of energy that's there, but it's not like all solids have, or one bar equals so many um, calories or kilocalories of energy. It's just in our representation, um, we see that solids we're going to associate with one bar, liquids two bars, and gas four bars. There is a particular difference in why we chose two bars here and four bars here. There is a massive amount of energy change between going from a liquid to a gas. And if you think about it, what we're doing is we're releasing these particles to be able to freely move wherever they want versus a liquid where we've kind of trapped them and a solid where we've really trapped them into a designated area. So it does take quite a bit of energy to break through that barrier we have between liquids and gases. With our coffee, we are not changing phase. We are liquid to begin with and liquid to finish. So we have two bars in each of our graphs, in our before and our after. For the ETH, we are looking at how much energy there is before, and usually we relate this to um, kind of a boiling slash 100 degrees Celsius uh, for water. Then we also look at kind of room temperature and freezing. So I'd like you to add this little section over here um, to the right with on, on your papers, even though there's not really a mark for it. So for temperatures, uh, we say one bar is 
around zero degrees Celsius or freezing. We say two bars for room temperature or uh, around 20-ish degrees Celsius. And then um, there's quite a big difference between room temperature and boiling. So we're going to go ahead and do that bigger jump again between the two to four bars for 100 degrees Celsius or boiling. So we're looking at kind of that change in in phase, that barrier jump there. It does take a lot of energy. It also takes a lot. There is a big gap between 20 degrees to 100 degrees. So you can see here we are really hot. We're steaming. So we have four there and two still in the phase, but it's brought down to room temperature. So we have two here and two here. So to show the transfer, initially we have a really hot substance that is um, in the liquid phase. So we've got four here showing that it's really hot and we've got two here saying that it's a liquid. But in the end, we have lost some of that thermal energy, but we've still stayed a liquid. Well, those two bars that were initially right here had to go somewhere. and. What we're concerned about is either they went into the system or they went out of the system. So we see that we have two bars that go out of the system. And we just draw that grow, going out uh, of the system. This is general. It's generalizations just showing the movement of the energy. We're really concerned in you know, relative amounts, six, four, um, on this side we have six, on this side we have four, so around two bars have left the system. Could this really, could we have said, you know, made this initially to be five or four and a, or three and a half bars here and two bars here, so we would have 5.5 5, and then it went down to four bars, so our difference would be 1.5 bars. Sure, we could say that, as long as your drawing would represent that with having one and a half bars leaving the system. What I'm concerned about is if your initial and your final and this change we have leaving or entering the system matches. Okay, so we have another one. Here, another example, we have a tray of ice cubes at negative 8 degrees Celsius is placed on the counter and becomes water at room temperature. What do we know about the situation? Well, our system is going to be a tray of ice cubes. We have solid water to liquid water, so we are not messing with CH, so that's not there. Uh, our Phase energy, we're going liquid, solid to liquid, so that is an increase. Our thermal increases because we have temperature going from negative 8 up to around 20 degrees Celsius. So we're changing multiple things here. CH is staying the same, but phase and thermal are increasing. We can see here in our graph that um, we have placed a half a bar for our thermal and that really comes from the negative 8 degrees Celsius. Could you have put a full one full bar in here? Sure, that's fine too, as long as your numbers underneath reflect this initial being 2 and then your in or out is showing the same thing. But here doing a half size is great. Um, if you wanted, um, if you want to do half sizes in any place is fine. I draw the line around quarter or five eighths or or whatever you want with um, the markings. So with, let's either let's stick with half or whole pieces, uh, just so that we kind of have a baseline for everybody. So we. 
for the th, um, we have half a bar for the initial at negative 8 degrees, and then this is in the final, we have 20 degrees Celsius, so we see that there is an increase here. So we went up to two bars. Um, for For the phase energy, we are going from a solid, so this is a solid for one bar and a liquid for two bars. Alright, we have our system here. If we look, we have 1.5 bars to begin with, but we end with four bars, so that means we had an increase of two and a half bars. We see that is going into the system. So really what we're looking at here is this one and a half of temperature change and one bar of the phase change entered into the system. We had to get that somewhere. And it, and it came just from the surroundings, the table or the air um, allowed energy to pass into this tray and cause it to melt. So this is how you do, um, this is how we are going to track our energy of a system when we're talking just in and out sort of methods.